How's everybody today? Good. Well, you know, for a first scrimmage, um, I was certainly pleased with uh, a lot of the effort that we had out there today. Uh, I thought the players competed well. Uh, some really good hitting, physical. Um, you know, the execution for first scrimmage was probably okay, not where it needs to be. You know, certainly we have a lot of things to work on. Uh, the defense is probably uh, was a little bit ahead uh, of the offense, and which is not unusual in terms of their ability to execute and do their job, um, have a little more experience, uh, which certainly helps, especially early on. Um, you know, offensively, I think we got better as, as the day went on uh, in terms of how we competed, how we played. Uh, a lot of the success that we had in the scrimmage offensively came toward the end of the scrimmage. We made some plays, got some confidence, and that kind of got people going, which I think when you have young players and a lot of new players, that's, that's something that uh, is really important for them to um, be able to gain. Uh, and it was a good, you know, good that that sort of happened out there today. Um, from a quarterback standpoint, I, I can't really say that one guy was – um, better than another. Uh, I think all did good things, and I think all did some things not so well. Uh, and I think that um, I would love to see one of these guys uh, sort of take the bull by the horns and, you know, play with a sense of urgency that affects everybody else, that uh, shows leadership and um, – you know, sort of the kind of command and confidence that uh, I think our team needs. And uh, I, I don't think that we need to have a quarterback that uh, has to win the game. Uh, I think that if we can have someone who can uh, play well enough and make good choices and decisions and uh, not make the major errors that um, would affect the game, that, that probably would be uh, keep us in the game. And uh, with the rest of the players that we have, I think we'd have a good chance. So, um, you know, there were some guys that we did not scrimmage today. Um, you know, Kenyon Drake did not scrimmage um, because he strained his hamstring the other day, which shouldn't be uh, a big issue. Um, and I think most everybody else was out there participating. Uh, I think Robert Foster um, – uh, sprained his knee toward the end of the scrimmage. Uh, I can't tell you the, uh, the the any give you any medical information along those lines. Uh, I don't really think we have anybody else other than bumps and bruises that you know could be affected for uh, a long time. Chris Black didn't go today. Um, he's still recovering from an ankle, but we should get him back soon. Uh, and I think that would be very helpful if we can get some of these guys that are sort of our playmaker guys on offense back out there working, I think that would be really, really helpful. So, um, you know, we've had a really productive, you know, 10 or 11 practices here so far. Uh, I think we have, uh, we're not disappointed at all in the attitude the players have, the work ethic they have, the things that they seem to be willing to do to try to improve. Um, so, but we're not really satisfied at all with where we are. Uh, I think we know where we need to get to, and we got lots of work to do. So um, we'll just keep working and coaching and try to get, get it done. Start right over here with Aaron. Next, two questions. First, how, how did you think the secondary performed today? Uh, a lot better. You know, we gave up a couple big plays toward the end, but uh, I, think, um, I think all in all we, we were better. Uh, I like the way the group plays. Um, you know, having Eddie and Gino at safety makes us a little more athletic, uh, a little more speed, a little more range on the field. Um, you know, Minka has certainly done a really, really good job. Anthony Everett has done a good job. Bradley's done a good job. Cyrus has done a good job. Marlon's been hurt, but he did scrimmage today, uh, and we, we think that he can be a contributor. So, um, you know, Marie Smith has, has – you know, done a good job. So, you know, we, we had a lot of young guys that are, are starting to feel their oats uh, in terms of their confidence and understanding how to do things and why. 
So it seems like that group is uh, actually uh, doing better. We had several interceptions today, and uh, that was a good thing. I was going to ask specifically about Maurice. Is he the kind of versatile guy that maybe can fill a role like Jarek did last year? Yeah, Mo plays all over the place. You know, he plays corner, he plays star, he plays money. Uh, and, um, you know, he's always been a little bit of a guy that, you know, was such a worrier about doing his job right. Now he's sort of over that because he's got a lot of confidence in how he does, does his job. And now I think he's playing with a lot more confidence. and has a lot better understanding and has really, you know, had a good camp so far. Some of the players talked about the play cards, the offensive play cards that you guys are using to signal in some of the plays. Where did the idea come from and how is it working in your mind? Well, we, we um, you know, we did, we, we met with um, Ohio State, TCU, um, some of these teams in the off season that, um, you know, use various methods of, how they do their no huddle. Um, and I'm not even saying that we're going to be a no huddle team. But we felt like last year, you know, we were kind of learning how to be a no huddle team on the run uh, because of the personnel we had. Uh, and uh, we felt it was best suited for Blake. And we've talked about that many times before. But we didn't go in with the idea that we're going to be a no huddle team. So we visited a lot of people in the off season to try to come up with the best system. You know, Kansas, uh, Washington, a lot of people that go no huddle. And uh, it's, just, it's just a methodology of how some people uh, get formations and plays in the game to sort of minimize uh, terminology and how much communication you have to have at the line to call a play. Coach, just a, a follow up on the quarterbacks where you repeatedly said waiting for a guy to take the bull by the horns or, or one one guy to look better than the other it, as the next couple of weeks go forward if that doesn't if that doesn't happen how do you make a decision I, I don't know I mean the way I see it happening is you know as soon as we start gaining a little bit of confidence in a guy and we kind of put him in the situation where okay you got a chance to be the guy, then they have to take advantage of that, and they have to take the ball and run with it. All right? and, and, you know, we've seen that a couple times, and it's a little bit like giddy up whoa, you know. Um, so I'm just waiting for somebody when they sort of break out and they're having a couple good days that, you know, they say, okay, I'm, 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 I'm ready to do this, and um, you got to win the team. Uh, and I see guys starting to win the team, and then something happens, but that, that, that's, that's got to happen. And, and, and somebody's got to make it happen. I can't make it happen. As bad as I'd like to make it happen, I can't make, make it happen. All right, Miss Terry was here today, and I'm sure when I go home, I'm going to get a, a real earful about the quarterbacks all right, and who played best and who she likes the best and all that. But she can't make it happen either. So, and, and if it doesn't get decided like it didn't when – you know, A.J. and Philip Sims were here. They both played a quarter, a quarter, a quarter, and a quarter in the first game, and that's how we figured it out. So do I want it to happen that way? No. But I can't make this happen as bad as everybody wants it to happen. And they want to create this great hope all right, that Coach said, this guy's the man. I can't make it happen. Two things. First of all, who does Miss Terry like best among the quarterbacks? I, I haven't got an earful yet. I got to get home first. I, I know it's coming. She was here today. This is her first deal. So I'm going to, you know, the real head coach will speak. So how did you guys break things up as far as reps with the quarterbacks today? And, and what's the process during the course of the next week just deciding in terms of how reps will be broken up next week? Well, I think we'd like to watch the film today and see how it went. But, you know, the way we try to do things is, um, you know, we try to take three guys, all right, just like you'd have a first, second, and third team guy, all right, and we divvy up the reps like we would a first team guy, a second team guy, and a third team guy in terms of how we would do it in the season. And we see how those guys respond. All right, then we have two guys, other guys working 
in an, another format. Uh, maybe we have the ones and threes and three quarterbacks alternating with them, and then we have the twos and the fours, and we have two quarterbacks alternating with them. So they're all getting reps. And then the guys that do the best stay there, and we bring a guy and give a different guy a chance. All right? And that's how we have done it to this point. Uh, I think we'll evaluate how guys play today and determine how we start and see where we go from there. And play, players have talked about just a, an emphasis on losing weight along the defensive line. The defensive linemen have talked about that. Do, just how talked about what? It, about <laughs> the, the emphasis as far as losing weight, dropping some weight, and just improving quickness and all of that. How much of an emphasis was there on that? And have you seen it make a difference just around the course of the early part of camp? Well, you know, we have always done that. Uh, we've just not gotten the players to respond to it like I think this group has responded to it. And all the guys have responded to it except two. Look, we have a nutritionist here. We do body fat, muscle mass, hydration test, you know, check vitamin D. We do everything you can do to, to try to make the guy the most efficient player at his position. And everybody has the right combination of all those things to be able to develop at his position. And then you look at a guy's performance relative to how much he weighs when a guy weighs 307 pounds and he can move and sustain and rush the passer and do all those things. And when he weighs 318 pounds, he can't do it. It's not rocket science. Now, the player may not want to weigh 307 pounds, but if he wants to be a good player and he wants to be successful, that's the best choice that he can make. So we've always done that. I just think this group has responded to it better. You know, way back when Cody was here, you know, he was 410 and our goal was 360 and our goal was really 345. And we never got past 360. We never got past there, but it was that. So we never reached our goal. But he would have been a better player if he had weighed three forty-five. Two more very quickly, Alex. And he was a good player at three sixty, and we loved him. Coach, you, you've talked all fall or not all fall practice about turnovers, trying to create more. How do you feel that the defense did in that aspect today? Well, but we, we, we've done two things with the turnovers. All right, when you're practicing against each other, this is kind of the good news, bad news thing. All, right, all of our turnover drills that we've been emphasizing, all right, we've been doing against each other because we thought we turned the ball over too much, and especially when it came to fumbling, and we didn't get enough fumbles or interceptions, tips and overthrows, breaking on the ball, finishing plays. So the emphasis has been – the, we're doing the drills against each other, all right? The DBs are trying to make the receivers cough the ball up. The linebackers are trying to make the running backs cough the ball up. So they're getting better at keeping it, and hopefully we're getting better at taking it away. So if we'd have got more turnovers today, we only accomplished half of that. But I do see players trying to get the ball out. The emphasis has you know, paid off in terms of awareness. And I think that's what we want. Last one right here. With Kenyon out today, um, what did you see from your, line, from your running backs, especially Damian Harris? Right. Well, you know, I didn't really want to see anything from the running backs, if you want to know the truth about it. You know, we wanted Derrick Henry to carry the ball six times. All right, I've seen him carry the ball enough not to make him go out there and prove himself in a scrimmage that means nothing to nobody. All right, um, Kenyon Drake, if he would have been playing today, uh, I wouldn't want to have seen much out of him. So Damian Harris, we got to see. He did some good things. Um, I think he learned today what it takes to play college football, uh, which is a good thing, uh, and he had some production. So, you know, Ronnie, same thing. So some of the young guys really got an opportunity uh, and I think, you know, that's a good thing. But, um, you know, Derrick Henry did carry the ball some today, and he, he has done a great job in this camp of, uh, you know, carrying the football and 
being a hard guy to tackle and finishing plays, and nobody can complain about his work ethic and how he's playing. He's doing a fabulous job, and you know Kenyon was doing great too. Um, you know when he when he you know tweaked his hamstring, so you know that's something that we do not want to be a chronic problem. So we want to make sure we get that fixed. But um, I, I was I was pleased with the opportunity that some players got today and how they managed it. Thanks, Coach. All right, thank you.